John was cleared by USADA. And to try to explain that maybe a little bit clearer, by cleared, I don't mean that he was found innocent. I mean that his suspension was given and uh, a total of 15 months. I think he's got like another 30 days and he will be there, which clears him in terms of the doubt and the clout that he was under. It was explained very clearly to everybody on multiple occasions from multiple commissions as well as USADA that a second-time offender, which John uh, was, had a minimum of two years and essentially a maximum of four. Based on the egregiousness of the offense, it didn't necessarily come with a ceiling. It definitely came with a floor of two years. It didn't necessarily come with a ceiling of four. They could go up to a lifetime ban, but that was not really on the table. There wasn't a precedent for that. Uh, So it was believed to be two to four, and we've covered that here a number of times. They ended up with 15 months. I think he's at 14. He's Like I said, he's got roughly 30 days, which would open up his eligibility for the Madison Square Garden card, as I have personally speculated on a number of times, with no evidence, just making a guess, see see what ends up happening out there. Things then got a little bit more interesting because, again, as it's been explained to us on a number of occasions— He was facing a minimum of two years, and we have seen much less egregious offenses. And by egregious, I am defining that to say the substance found in his system. We have seen substances that have been less, substances that have been medicine, substances that have been prescribed by doctors, uh, and somebody given much more time. We saw a Nick Diaz situation where it was a lifetime ban for marijuana. We saw a Vandalay uh, Vandal Silva situation where it was a lifetime ban. Both of these, of course, they worked through. But a lifetime ban for Vandalay Silva, who tested positive for nothing. He, he didn't even do the test. They found that to be so egregious that they banned him for life. John was found with an illegal substance. And I'm not talking about a banned substance. I'm talking about if he was found in possession of this, the police would put him in handcuffs. Illegal substance. And they ended up with 15 months. Well, we need an explanation. How how'd you get to 15 months when you told us all it was it was two years? So the explanation came out. And the explanation was that there was an article within the USADA rules that if John was to provide them with substantial information. And the clause went on and on from there. But essentially, if he was to provide them with essential uh, or rather substantial information, which means if he was to turn uh, other people in. That there is a way within the USADA rules to give him a less sentence than the two years that was explained to everybody on multiple occasions. So that is the category that he fell under. And and the way that that worked took a couple of terms since we've talked last as well. First off, it was explained that he has already given information and will have to continue to give information or they can revoke the sentence and resentence him. All right, fair enough. The speculation begins to come with who would John give? And in the world of, and it doesn't matter if it's the FBI, it doesn't matter if it's a DA's office, and apparently it doesn't matter with USADA in terms of this being a clause, but the way that this works is that you have to be able to shoot upwards. You can't shoot down. So who is John going to give that's bigger than John? John Jones is is the biggest fish on the hook in the world of MMA. The gym that he trains out of and the speculation that he's turning on his own teammates and and things along these lines. Fine, let's just go along with that because we don't know. But let's just, let's just see that theory through. The problem with that theory is there is nobody in that gym that is a bigger fish than John Jones. He could give up two or three or four or five teammates. They still don't equal one John Jones. So that's where I think it's it starts to get a little bit interesting. I don't have an answer for you. I have a guess. I'll go ahead and make my guess, but I think if I'm going to do it with any level of responsibility, I have to say to you guys in as clear of words as I know how to speak that I don't know what I'm talking about in terms of having any evidence. I just have a guess. Having been through the system before, uh, no deal like that was ever offered to me. There there was nothing. I never knew this, this existed. I've never heard anybody speak about it. USADA has never spoke about it that I've ever seen before. And I see this stuff. I study this stuff. And then I bring it to you guys so that you don't have to waste your time studying it. I've never heard of this. Doesn't mean it wasn't there. Just never heard of it before. 
So if you were to begin to speculate who would John turn on, I don't believe that he's going to be able to turn on MMA, meaning fellow teammates, fellow guys that he's heard about. And it has to be substantial information. He cannot come in and give speculative rumor. He would have to give information that I know. Here are phone numbers. Here are dates. Here are the guys. Here are the substances. Things along those lines, if not that criteria exactly, and to the T. And he has to continue to do it, which would be tough. That would be a little bit tough when they outed him as an informant. Be a little bit tough for John to be invited to some of those circles and be able to gather that information. So I'm going to jump around a little bit, but let's try to tie this all together. So, so fast forward the tape, which would bring us to Monday. His manager, Malky, went on a show, and it was either Ariel's old show or it's Ariel's new show. I, I don't know who he was on, but Malky came out and he said, hey, not so fast. Before you guys think John Jones is a snitch, under that clause that USADA has put out. John could also be giving you information on himself. He could also just be telling personal stories and revealing things that have not been revealed before. Tie that in with something else that you guys may not know. USADA will not come out and speak out on people they are investigating. USADA is very quiet, but USADA does have a deal, and they will call and they will tell you this up front, which is if you go and you speak, We will respond. So if you want to just let this go, if you want to handle this behind closed doors, we can do that. But if you go public, we're going to come right behind you. We won't go first, but we will go. And they'll tell you this up front. So when Malky came out and did that, then USADA responded. And USADA made it very clear, no, he has already given information, and he will continue to give us information. That is exactly what it means. It means We flipped him. He is now an informant. He's already given info, and he will continue to give info, or we will revoke and revise this 15-month suspension. Okay, fair enough. It just still leaves me, and I am still in the vein of the conversation, of Chael does not know. He's just, I'm going to make my guess. I've heard different guesses out there. I'm, I'm going to make mine. I don't believe that John could point the finger at anybody in MMA, including to give three, four, or five guys up and go, well, five is better than one. I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think the DA, I can tell you the DA doesn't work that way. I can tell you the feds don't work that way, and I don't think that that USADA would work that way either. I believe that it has to be a bigger fish. Now, here's something that people aren't taking into consideration. USADA will look at a hierarchy, and they will look at it differently. By example... USADA will look at a coach as a different level, a level above an athlete, okay? So if John Jones could wasn't going to give them athletes that were bigger fish than him, but he could give them a coach and say that a, a, a coach has knowledge and, and helps to facilitate this, USADA would look at that, even though that coach could be a smaller name and a smaller fish, but they would look at that as a higher level. None of what I'm suggesting here is that John Jones has turned in one of his coaches or that his coaches have done anything like that. I'm just offering you a backstory to make sure you understand how USADA works. They would then look at a bubble, a level above the coach to the actual dealer, the actual supplier, even if that guy didn't have a bigger name and a bigger headline, but he had some level of an empire, some level of a Rolodex that they could go tap into. That still, neither of them, I'm just giving you backstory, that's not actually my prediction. My own prediction, I think that he that he had a piss in the punch bowl and he's turned on the NFL. That that's, that's my own guess. I think that he's given him fish outside of the world of MMA, which has not yet been considered, but that is my own personal guess. I base that on zero evidence, just an understanding that I just laid out for you, which is you cannot shoot down and make a deal, you have to be able to shoot up, all right? The only reason they made a deal with Sammy the Bull, who confessed to 19 murders, is because Sammy the Bull would give him John Gotti. You have to be able to go up in deal-making. And you can't go, well, I got five guys in exchange for me. If they're five undercard guys and they don't have names, it's not going to work that way. And any of these organizations, whether you like it or not, will openly tell you, The bigger headline we can get, the better. If we can make an example out of a really big fish, we'll do it. 
and we'll attach our own names to it and the credibility of our own organization to it. So they want they want a bigger fish. And I just I'm not here to believe that anybody out of that camp or even any multiple people out of that camp all together equal one John Jones. Which makes me think he, he might have gone he might have gone in a different direction completely.